Hey, how's it going, guys? As the title of the video would suggest, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna quickly, or I mean as quickly as my definition would imply because I tend to ramble a bit about stuff, but I'm gonna be quickly going through a series of figures that I've accumulated over this past couple of months. I owe it to myself to talk about them in quick su succession because of my absence and whatnot. Anyways, here we have Variable Action Heroes Boa Hancock and Nico Robin. Now, Boa Hancock I had mixed feelings on and I wanted to wait until I got Nico Robin because judging from the pictures, they aesthetically, in terms of articulation, looked like they were going to be the same. Uh, and I wanted to hold judgment until I got Nico Robin to determine if I would like Nico Robin more than Boa Hancock. So I was surprised that the articulation is slightly different on Nico Robin than Boa Hancock. Uh, aesthetically though, uh, I should address that Boa Hancock, the Boa Hancock's breastuses are too big in my opinion. Now I don't know, I'm not like a super nerdy into uh, One Piece where I know their birthdays or their measurements, that kind of stuff. Uh, but to me, as far as female characters in the One Piece series, all of them seem to have the same shape. Uh, hourglass figure, you know, oversized hips and breastuses. However, I feel like Boa Hancock's breasts, as, as, I mean, in this in figure form, seems a bit too much in my opinion. Uh, whereas Nico Robin's, while still just as big, aren't nearly as planetoid. Uh, they feel like uh, they look to have more, like you know, like there's gravity weighing them down. Whereas these ones look like two helium balloons, uh, and that's aesthetically unpleasing to me. Surprisingly, uh, also at the chest, uh, Nico Robin has actually two points of articulation at the chest and right here, whereas. Uh, uh, Boa Hancock only has one ball joint, I believe, and for whatever reason, for wev whatever ungodly reason, the designers or the sculptor, whoever, because they're clearly two different people who worked on this figure, Boa Hancock's uh, little dress here is actually segmented into two pieces, where this piece is right here, and this piece is actually connected to her thigh piece, and for what I just don't understand why that's a thing, because it looks hideous when you're moving it like that, see that? It's like these, this skirt is actually connected to her thigh piece, uh, her uh, right thigh piece, and it looks gross. Whereas Nico Robin, her uh, entire uh, dress here, whatever you want to call it, is actually one solid piece, no pun intended. Um, and I like that over this. I don't know why they went with this weird two-cut piece thing attached to the thigh. That is hideous, ungodly. Whoever thought of that, I don't know. You rethink your priorities. This is where it's at, this solid piece of soft plastic. Uh, another thing is that at the toes, uh, Bowen Hancock has these weird, uh, very unsightly articulation where you, when you move the actual uh, toe, it actually bends with the skin and it looks gross at an angle. However, if you look at Nico Robin down here, uh, she doesn't have that issue at all. What they did is where uh, the only part that's articulated is, uh, if we can focus here, is actually just the tip of the shoe. So you can see the skin actually doesn't move with it and that looks way more natural. Uh, and overall, I mean, I love the Nico Robin figure just way more. Uh, however, when it comes to uh, the variable, variable action figures, there's always one thing that's wrong with them. Like literally every time I get a variable action figure, there's always one thing that's wrong with it. And with uh, Boa Hancock, her, her, both her legs, especially this one because it's, uh, in, it's pretty much because of this massive hunk of plastic attached to her thigh, her, her thighs are like super loose, see that? I mean, it's not like you're going to pose her in, very, in, in uh, aerial poses, but it's like, come on. Come on, variable action heroes. You're going to be selling me this $80 stuff? Come on. It's got to be a higher end here. Uh, and with Nico Bob and her left or uh, le yeah, left shoulder piece right here pops off, right, it pops off relatively easy. So that does kind of suck. Also, another minor thing to note, she does not come with a face that's looking forward. Uh, the face you have on right here is her looking to, off to the side, smirking. Uh, here she's looking off to the other side, angry, and she's looking off, or I mean she has both her eyes closed uh, doing her, uh, whatever her devil fruit power does. I have no idea what her, all I know is it m makes hands and apparently she can clone herself. I don't know how that works. Uh, but it pisses me off to no end. You have no idea. That's a pet peeve of mine when figures don't come with a face that's looking forward. That's just, I don't know, it's, it's been uh, engraved in me ever since I started collecting figures. I need to have a figure that's looking forward. Uh, anyways, I've, I've dragged this on long enough and on to the next figure. Next up, we have SH Figure Arts Itachi Uchiha, one of the coolest characters in the Naruto thingamajig. Uh, 
Well, no, not not the coolest. He's the second coolest. At least in my opinion, Rock Lee is hands down the coolest character in Naruto. Uh, so I'm very much excited for SH Rock Lee, uh, his, his eventual release, which I believe is in March. Holy shit, I'm, I'm containing my excitement because I really want that figure. But anyways, here we have Itachi. Uh, I wasn't exactly sure if I was going to like this figure only because I kind of wished... Uh, they made it so that he was articulated with his cape on, but I don't know. It, I know for a fact it wouldn't have looked good because it's going to be all bulky with all that coat and stuff. So it's not, it wasn't going to look as good, uh, but it was just wishful thinking. I mean, if SH Fairy Arts was in the business of making uh, cloth material, uh, then maybe they could have pulled off a cloth Akatsuki looking coat over him so he can put it on and off. That would have been pretty mint. Tachi here is pretty damn impressive i have no complaints really uh, well I, I do kind of wish his little ponytail was on a ball joint or something this is just pegged inwards because normally when you have it when you have his cape on you have to have it removed uh other than that this is a solid figure in my opinion yeah, oh yeah um well okay another minor nitpick is that i wish that his little uh because this is supposed to be a one i believe this is one solid war, uh, wardrobe but it's just cut into three different pieces but i kind of wish this piece was a uh, much more softer. This is pretty hard plastic. I kind of wish it was much softer uh, to allow a little bit more movement of or, or of his forward and back. What I mean, I mean it's pretty good, decent, but I just wish I could do more. Is all I'm trying to say. Aside from that, pretty cool figure. I like it. This was the shortest one. Moving on. Next. Next up, we have amazing Yamaguchi Revel Tech Deadpool. Now this figure right here. I have been anticipating ever since its reveal early on in the year because of his amazing posability. Now this seems to be kind of like a you either love it or you hate it figure. Now I'm in the boat of loving it mainly because I am a I'm an I'm an advocator of the Rebel Tech line of figures, even the old ones. Well maybe not the old 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 ones like the very first release of Dante. That thing looks horrendous. Nevertheless, I love Rebel Tech figures. Uh, I love the dynamicness, because pretty much as far as I mean, I, I will agree, vanilla poses, uh, you know, standard flair like stuff that Itachi or those figures are doing, stuff like that, you know, natural poses are not really these the Revel Tech's forte. What you want to do is do something like this, wide stances over the top, and it looks marvelous, something out of a comic, if you will. I'm very much anticipating the. The Yamaguchi Spider-Man figure because that look, that thing looks. That's probably. I mean, it's not the not the best looking Spider-Man figure, but it's the best looking Spider-Man figure in Spider-Man poses, if that makes sense. Uh, minor nitpicks. Now, this is the common thing. That's uh, the the new sculpting that Rebel Tech figures that are that Yamaguchi San has been in, implementing is the whole shoulder articulation thing where it's double jointed. It's double jointed Rebel Tech joint, and it looks weird at certain angles. But when you have it like this you know from a certain angle like this it looks really good and you can't really notice it because uh, at certain angles uh, it looks like the shoulder is separated from the body and it looks very awkward but when you get it right it looks damn good by the way these two accessories are actually from a different figure this is i believe this is the revel i mean a uh, variable action figure zoro figure and this is actually from the revel tech right in uh revel tech figures attached to his back because uh i gotta like i mean i like my uh, i like i like my deadpool with swords so you know Anyways, I like it. Moving on. Holy shit. Now these guys, I have also been very much anticipating for a very long time. S.H. Figuarts, uh, S.H. Figuarts, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Classic 80s. Oh my god, they look so good. Now, you may be wondering, Overlord, you're missing Mikey, and I'm well aware of that. I'm getting on it. I kind of missed out on pre-orders, so I'm kind of looking for a cheap price currently. Uh, but I should have it by this time next year. Or, I mean, I guess technically when I upload this, it'll already be 2017. So I'm in, in a couple of months, I'm, I'm saving my money. You know what I'm saying? Too much figures. <laughs> But these guys are fantastic. They have their, uh, they're making. You can actually kind of see it right here. The difference. Uh, they're bought. I'm not exactly sure in like what parts, but I know for a fact their calves down to their feet are actually made of a uh, what's it called uh, metal casting or something like super alloy. No, that's not the word. Uh, 
it's made of metal. You can even tell the material where this is, you can see by the shininess, where this is more metallic looking, this is more your typical plastic. And I'm also, if I'm not mistaken, the, their little medallions are also, actually, bleh, are also made of metal. These guys are probably the best Teenage Mutant Ninja figures, hands down, in terms of quality, in my opinion. Uh, I'm well aware there's the NECA ones. Uh, I haven't, well, I mean, I, I do have the, what are, what are they called? The San Diego Comic Con exclusive that were or at least this year's exclusive comic-con uh, tmnt figures from NECA the ones that are sprite based but I guess they weren't supposed to be sprite based uh, I have those those are pretty cool cool too but I, uh, because they're sprite based I didn't really like them however these guys look amazing I can't wait to get Michelangelo into my possession in the next couple of weeks I have nothing but good I have like literally no nitpicks uh, well eh, well I kind of wish it kind of looks at first glance that like you can be able to move their eyeballs, doesn't it? Kind of like the Reveltech TNMNT figures can do. It almost looks like you can move their eyeballs. That would have been pretty freaking sweet if you can move their eyeballs. Uh, aside from that, I will say some of the, the swappable faces, which I don't have at hand currently, but some of the faces for Leo and Donatello look a little, uh, the, swappable, the, the swappable head looks a little um, out of character, if you will, while Raphael's does look pretty much in character. Uh, aside from that, from, from that, these guys are freaking amazing. Get these now before they go up in price. I mean, they're already up in price, uh, which is actually kind of funny. I pre-ordered. I originally pre-ordered uh, Leonardo and Donatello, uh, Donatello on Amazon of US. I pre-ordered my copies from um, you know US distributor here in Amazon and uh, in the US. I mean, and uh, it was gonna the total the total cost was gonna be like 150 something free shipping. Uh, however, I went on eBay uh, and I saw these two figures going for $100 free shipping from a U.S. seller and I quickly canceled my Amazon uh, order and got those on eBay. So uh, that's kind of interesting. Moving on. And now we're here at the finale. Every now and again a figure comes along once a year that very much takes my breath away. And this figure is the one. In fact, it's almost criminal that I'm not including a single review for this figure. But I figured I might as well jump, jumble it in with these guys because uh, this thing is freaking amazing. This is from Mezco, a U.S. distributor, or I mean U.S. company, um, which is funny. Again, going back to the price, uh, this is actually my first time experiencing the reverse situation of pricing for figures because this is a U.S. product, right? I pre Normally, if I'm going to buy SH Figure Arts Figmas, I'm going to buy from a Japanese distributor, right? Ami Ami, Hobbling, Jap Hobbling Japan, what have you. Uh, because that's where they're gonna sell it to you at a relatively cheap price. Uh, I don't really promote Big Bad Toy Store. Uh, I'm not an advocate because their pricing for figures like that are pretty high up, which is understandable because they have to import the figures themselves to make you know money and whatnot. Uh, but I don't really like them. So I had this reverse situation where I got this American figure on Ami Ami and the total was a hundred and thirty something dollars or something like that. And then I checked on eBay and there was a guy selling these figures for like $74 free shipping. I don't know if they were bootlegs or what, but that was an insane deal. But unfortunately, Ami Ami has no cancellation policy, so I couldn't really afford to lose any more, you know, cancellations because I've been kind of canceling my uh, figures left and right these past couple of months. But anyways, screw all that noise. This figure is, I mean, it, it takes my breath away. I want to say it's not my favorite figure of 2016, but it is visually the best looking figure of 2016, in my opinion. Uh, the best way I can describe it is pre it's pretty much miniature Hot Toys. That's 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 all I can say. Uh, but there is one thing that I cannot stand that this figure has or lacks thereof. He has no proper ankle pivot at all, and that is let me focus a big deal for me I mean that's pretty much as far as you're gonna get I mean he can get somewhat forward and back kind of thing but it's the side to side that really kills it for me that is a major a big deal breaker for me on this figure I mean I'm still gonna keep it for a bit but man the lack of a proper ankle pivot is serious a serious downer for me some of some very nice features that I didn't know this thing would have is actually this little thing at the back for his shield is actually a magnet, right? Right? Yeah, it's a magnet in here and right here, and it connects like that. Also, at his wrist, he also, aside from this, uh, to hold it from here, he also has a magnet at, like, right here at this little bag here. See that? Look at that. That's pretty cool. I do wish the little magnet uh, sensitivity was a little stronger, but, I mean, look at that. 
That's really impressive. Uh, he came with a whole bunch of little accessories. I'm not exactly sure about the little grenade pieces. They don't really stay on too well. He came with these two little grenade pieces. They don't really stay on his belt that good. Uh, aside from that, this figure is pretty damn awesome. Uh, also, another minor, I mean, this is a pretty big nitpick, almost a deal breaker. I mean, had I known about that, I'm not gonna, if I knew about the limit of the ankle articulation, I would not have gotten him. Uh, but now it's, you know, I mean, I already paid for it, so I'm not gonna sell it now. I'm gonna keep him for a bit, I don't know. He also lacks no waist articulation at all. He only has a ball joint right here up, the, up in the upper chest. Um, and it's not that, as far as ab crunch, it's not that, you know, impressive. He can get an arch pretty good, but that's pretty much it. Uh, but yeah, this guy visually, I mean, this whole cloth material thing, I didn't think was going to work out. Um, but man, it's just, it's stunning. Every time I look at it, just having it in a vanilla pose like this, neutral, it looks amazing. And I'm not even into statues. I don't really collect statue figurines. Uh, but this thing would probably, you know, I don't know. I don't know what I'm trying to say, but it just, visually, it looks amazing. That's all I'm trying to say. Articulation is pretty good. It's just the ankle that is a bigger deal breaker for me. But the, yeah, that is pretty much, I guess I've pretty much uh, talked about every figure that I've accumulated these past four months. However, there is one special figure that I just got in the mail today. Uh, let me give you a quick glimpse of what it is and I'll do a proper review on it later. Oh, what was that? Well, that was a little taste. I'll see you guys later.